I'm uh, Mark Conde. I'm a professor of physics at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. I have a joint appointment in the Geophysical Institute in the Space Physics Group, and I also am a faculty member in the Physics Department. We are at Poker Flat Research Range, which is a little bit outside of Fairbanks, Alaska, and we're getting ready to launch a sounding rocket mission which is called AWESOME. And that acronym stands for Auroral Waves Excited by Substorm Onset Magnetic Events. So the real question that AWESOME is looking at is how the aurora mixes and disturbs Earth's upper atmosphere. If you go up above about 100 kilometres, the atmosphere starts to separate out. The heavy molecular species sit lower in the atmosphere, the lighter atomic species sit higher. And that's the sort of static case of the atmosphere, but the aurora will mix that up. It will lift those heavy molecular species up. That perturbs the ionosphere. It changes how radio communications would operate. It changes satellite navigation, radar. Uh, and even spacecraft orbits, that sort of disturbance. How does that happen? The classical picture is that the aurora would just cause convective upwelling just like a candle flame. But it turns out that's quite difficult to do and it's quite difficult to model. An alternative explanation is that more that the aurora excites waves in the atmosphere and it's those waves that do the mixing. We don't know the relative importance of those two processes, whether just the straight uplift is the most important mechanism, or whether a mixing due to waves is a more important mechanism. So what we want to do is we want to wait until there's a significantly energetic auroral event, and we want to measure both the upwelling and the wave response to that aurora, and just see if we can see which of those two mechanisms is providing most of the motion that would result in mixing. So the implication for daily life is to understand uh, the consequences that aurora would have for things like communication, navigation, radar, and spacecraft orbits. All of those things are impacted by that. And of course, those things impact daily life, particularly here in Alaska. So Poker Flat is an ideal location for this experiment for two main reasons. Firstly, Poker is ideally located within what's called the auroral oval, the zone of the planet Earth in which aurora occurs. The other reason why Poker Flat is a good site for doing this is that the population density is very low in the downrange area. And so when you launch a rocket, you have to make sure that there's no hazard associated with the rocket flying over populated areas. Uh, there are populated areas in northern Alaska, but we can sort of choose a trajectory that avoids them. And so we have a large area in which we can fly safely. From a scientific perspective, the thing I like about the rockets is that it enables you to place sensors and traces right within the region that you're trying to study. But of course, also, it's, it's it, very fun and exciting to plan a sounding rocket mission to figure out what's feasible, figure out what, what capabilities you have, work out all the sorts of things that might, what might be a problem and try and build a, a mission that's resilient to the sorts of problems that might occur. And then of course going out into the field and actually launching a rocket is, is of course extremely exciting. 